Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. This is a killer blast, and it's really one of the prettier snakes that I think we produce here at BHB. And the fact is, this snake wouldn't exist today if it wasn't for a risk that I took almost 11 years ago buying the first pinstripe. We're gonna take a look at that investment. You're watching Snake Bites. Back in 1999, I get a phone call from my connection over in West Africa. Happened to be Benin, where a lot of ball pythons come out of. They tell me they have this really incredible morph ball python, but it's super expensive, the most I've ever spent on a snake. There's no internet in Africa, so they can't send me a picture. I don't even know if it exists, but I go ahead and send the money and take the risk. So after a week or so of a lot of stress and anxiety of getting the snake over from West Africa to the United States, the snake arrived certainly wasn't that easy, but sure enough, when I opened up that bag, this is what I ended up seeing. What would come to be known as the pinstripe ball python with this super reduced pattern, it was everything I expected and more, and to make it even cooler, it turned out to be a male. Now the only question was, would this trait be genetic? After putting a couple years of huge priority into getting this guy ready to breed, we are really hoping that it would be co-dominant or dominant, which basically just means when I breed it to a normal female, on average half the babies are going to have the pinstripe trait. Now there's always a chance it could be recessive, which means that the babies would look normal but still carrying the pinstripe trait, or the dreaded normal ball python that just looked really cool and wasn't genetic whatsoever for that pattern. That would have been a huge loss for our business. All right, guys, it's Kyle's Question of the Week. Now, as you all know, Brian Barczyk is big into all this paranormal crap like ghosts and Bigfoot and aliens and a bunch of crap like that. I don't know if all of us here at BHB feel the same. I want to know what you guys feel about that. Text or video comment below. Let me know. So this is kind of an embarrassing story, but one that's important to the development of this project. We're getting close to the first breeding season with the pinstripe. I'm here spot cleaning snakes one night all alone. I'm actually spot cleaning the pinstripe's cage when I hear a knock at the door. I go over to answer it, and it's just a buddy of mine. We ended up chatting for about a half an hour or so, didn't think much of it. I come back into the room and realize, oh, sh I left the cage open and the snake is gone. Oh, So now I'm freaking out. I have no idea where this snake is. I start tearing the place apart, looking everywhere where I think it could possibly be. After all, it's only been about a half hour. How far can the animal actually go? So after three hours, I finally find the snake crammed underneath another cage. Fortunately, the animal was okay and everything was fine. But I think to myself, because of a bonehead move, I actually could have cost my business all of its expansion. Needless to say, I'm pretty hardcore about closing cages now. As you can see, it was a quite an amazing adventure, but sure enough, later that year, we bred that pinstripe to a few normals, and it was a dominant animal, and we produced a bunch of pinstripe ball pythons. It's amazing to see what that one mutation has done to so many morphs. I want to show you just a few of the highlight animals over the last 10 years. And this is a chocolate spinner blast. It's amazing to see how one mutation can have such an influence on so many animals. This isn't even all the mutations that we work with pinstripes, let alone all the people that have produced stuff that we don't have yet, not to mention the animals that will be produced in the years to come. Hey guys, guess what? I've taken control of my own Chewy Challenges. I write, direct, act. So send in your suggestions. I will select personally the ones I like and I'll do them and defeat them and win, because I'm the Chewy Master. 
Hello, my name is Matt Majui. I'm going to attempt to kiss the king rat snake on its head. This is the first Jewy challenge. I completed the challenge and I won. This has been Mahatma Chewy for the Chewy Challenge. Thank you and come again. For this week's Common of the Week on the Sweet Baby Snakes and Food Baby episode, the question was, if Kool-Aid were water and water were Kool-Aid, would you be as sick of Kool-Aid as you are of water, blah, 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 and Spudlyification said, well, to be honest, I'm not sure if water is tasteless or we are just used to it like we are used to the smell of our mucus. But either way, I want to be drinking something sweet. Smiley face. Wait, so you want to drink mucus? I, I don't even understand. Where, where, just leave a comment. I'll feature you in a future episode. Where do we get this stuff at? So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And I think it's safe to say if the Pinstripe Project wouldn't have worked out the way it did, my collection probably wouldn't be where it is today, and I probably wouldn't be making this show either. And speaking of that, I want to give a huge thanks to the people over at Nextune Networks. They're great people, and they make awesome shows. You guys got to check them out over at nextnewnetworks.com. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites.